Hey guys, it's Rich and uh, thanks for being here. I'm gonna get right to it. Um, this past November, in less than a two week span, two devastating hurricanes rocked Central America, specifically Honduras, leaving behind unknown death, flooding, homelessness, catastrophic destruction, and leaving one of Latin America's poorest countries even more poor and even more desperate, and this in the midst of a pandemic. Hurricanes Eta and Iota will go down on record as one of the worst all-time disasters in the history of Honduras, a country with a population of a little less than 10 million. So we have the pleasure to have Ada Montiel here with me, uh, who is a native of Honduras and is leading many relief efforts from California to Honduras. How are you, Ada? I'm doing great, thank you. Thank you for having, having me here. Well, let's get right into it. Um, what are the conditions on the ground today in Honduras? Devastated. It's just really sad to see all those houses underwater, people in the street with their kids, family. Um, who knows? Now we don't we don't have an exact number of um, of the loss of life of people, and um, it's really sad. It's actually really really devastated for me and for for many people. You know, family members and all those things that that you know material things really don't matter, uh, but life of people do and and um and i'm just so thankful and blessed to be part of helping uh, my people you know i can say that and i'm just i'm thankful that god put me in this position every time this is our second time doing this for um for honduras and for the people in honduras and um um it just this time it's really had touched me so close to see um kids in the street to see probably they lost their parents, parents lost their kids. And um, I'm just, I'm just so sad that, you know, we, we can really do this, you know, little, it's so little, the things that we can do to relieve the pain of these people, these people, it's actually in the street. And, um, and then we just um, being helping out, putting clothes together, um, food, uh, all kinds of things. We actually filled up seven containers to send out we have the last one that needs to be sent out. There's no, no more resources for that. Um, but God is good. God is always making a way for us to be there and for us to be a bless to others. So that's where we at right now, Richard. So tell us a little bit about some of the relief efforts uh, that are currently underway and what are the most urgent needs of the people of Honduras right now? Well, as you know, right now, um, all the shelters are packed, are packed, people are sleeping on the floor. So they, some of them rather to just go and sleep in the, in the street. But um, right now I'm collecting um, uh, 1,000, um, I think it's called cut for, for, it's like a small bed that you pop out and, and you just, you know, give us more space in the containers for us to take. Um, also, they need medicine. As you know, there's a pandemic, and I know there's going to be a lot of more of with all all of this. I'm sure there's going to be more people sick about you know flu and all those things that we we send um, dry milk. Uh, we send out um, dry uh, canned uh, canned food, and we send out um, clothes, um, blankets. We send out a lot of all those things, baby food, um, water water because the conditions of the water right now over there is just not good so i'm afraid that these people are going to be getting all these other symptoms you know and so it's just it's really sad and we we have filled up a lot of um, containers with water with um um first aid with um necessities you know like the two brushes all those things because they lost everything they literally have nothing what are some of the ways here in wisconsin we can help well, um, well, I want to thank you personally, you and your beautiful wife. You guys already sent me some help and being part of this from the day one. And, uh, and now you're putting together um, some small gift because the gift bags for kids out there. You know, let's just take, a, take in consideration that it's Christmas time is coming. And these kids are not going to have Christmas. Is that, that's where it really gets really sensitive to me because we have so much 
we are spoiled with so many things. And, um, and just to know that these kids are just wandering. Um, sometimes they eat, sometimes they don't eat. Um, you know, I just want to bring some, um, some good, good things for the kids, especially because that's where my heart goes to, to the kids, to the, to, you know, to the mothers uh, uh, with kids and, 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 um, and also to the older, you know, people. And, and I just want to bring uh, something that gives, takes away the little, the little pain and the, the pain that is, they've been through and the trauma that they've been through. Well, I know earlier this week we were talking and, and um, uh, you inspired me. You had mentioned something. You had started talking about the children there and about how it's not going to be much of a Christmas um, uh, while they're in the street or in the shelters and whatnot. They're not going to have anything. So um, it's funny because we brought that to our parish and, and this Friday actually we're getting um, our youth together and our families together and we're going to be making care packages uh, with gifts and toys and candy and, and whatnot, toothbrushes, whatever. And, um, and the outpouring of generosity since I put this out less than 24 hours ago has been overwhelming. I'm getting donations and, and gift cards and, and money and, and, and other things that people are bringing to the parish. So um, keep them coming, people. We um, can never have enough, you know, and yet everything is enough. Um, so so I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate you inspiring all of us to act, um, you know, because I think about this rebuilding effort. It's going to last some time. It's going to last a long time. This isn't something that, oh, we need to do until Christmas and then it's over. Oh, yes, absolutely. This is not just, we're just starting to do this. It's going to take about two years to probably rebuild, rebuild uh, the country, not just the country, small community. So we'll start working with some people that are going to be hoping to do that because this is a long-term, um, uh, uh, how do I say this? This is a long-term um, commitment mm -hmm. for me because uh, I can't just go there and drop off a gift and, and go out, um, you know, and go back to 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 the States and, and just forget about this. I can't just do that. It's a continuation help for these people and um and I'm just I'm I just love to do that because I want to see that um that how we let God use us because we are his tools I love to see that when when we come together and we just make this happen because that's what I more um put my my you know my energy where I said when we come together it's just amazing how things are moved easy and how God Put, you know the right people together so it is gonna be taking about two to two years between two or three years to rebuild Honduras again and you mentioned earlier about like um the devastation of the hurricane on these children and and um, the trauma that comes with experiencing this and you're no stranger to hurricanes yourself talk about that a little bit well I'm not I was born actually in the first hurricane that um that hit Honduras, it calls, uh, it's if he, I think they name it after that, they name it something else, but that was the first um, hurricane. I, I remember my mom telling me that um, she was, you know, I was just six months old, that my mom said that, you know, she was carrying me uh, through the water, try to get across this river. And I was one of those babies. And, and just to know that, and uh, it gets me the chills you know I, just, I was one of those surviving babies um I was only six months and my mom carried me through this cold water and I can't I, I can't imagine the fear of my mom going through you know um carrying trying to get me safe through that and and I just that's why my heart's more tender to to just I I've been seeing so many videos and and, and uh in pictures Richard that just blow my mind away and, and just know that I was once in that situation, you know, and um, I survived that. And just to think about the pain that my mom went through, all that, that, that fear that a parent can feel of losing, not your life, but your kid's life. So that really, really hit me really hard to see parents that they had to let go one kid to run to say the other word. It, it's just disturbing videos. And so, um, 
And so for me to be one of the survivors of one of the hurricanes in Honduras in 1974, it's, it's a blessing. And so I got to give some of that. God put us here in, with a purpose. And so you just got to know your purpose. You got to know that God will always use you and let God use you. And so when God put this in, you know, I, I, I have a business, I have kids, I, I'm a mother of four and I have two grandkids. So this is a legacy for me, for me, for my kids and my grandkids and so on. And so I want my grandkids to remember that grandma did that. And I, I'm very proud of my mom doing that and, and, and projecting me in, in, a, in a way that say, you know, you one of those kids, even my mom, it was telling me, you know, just tell me what you need and we'll do it. We'll make it happen. And I come from a very strong um, family that we are always there um, on the first line, you know. And um, like uh, I was mentioning that this is not the first time that we help people from Honduras. It is, they came in a, in a caravan two years ago and uh, we spent Thanksgiving um, in, in Tijuana with them. Mom, I brought my mom and I'm cooked for all these people. My kids went and helped out. And it was amazing how the people connect and how it just God make a way and he prepared everything. You know, it's just amazing because he gave me the strength. <laughs> Guys, it's crazy how I get so, so motivated. When, and then there's a time that I want to just give up. And, and God says, no, there's more to it. There's more. I want you to do more. So. Uh, right now, when you give me this opportunity, it's I know there's people, people haven't even heard about it. I was filling up my gas tank and uh, and this lady saw me, she goes, what's going on? And it said, we're doing donations. I didn't know that. And she just across the street from the place that we are getting all these containers. And she was just blown, mind blowing it that we, you know, that she didn't know about the hurricane. When we are aligned uh, in doing God's will and, and, and we are perfect alignment with um, what he wants us doing with our life and, and, and loving him and loving others. Um, there is very difficult and, and undeniable uh, the joy that comes from that. Um, so um, I appreciate that. And I know um, you've experienced um, some trials and some, some, some long hours working on this um, just to get where we're at um, and to send those containers. Um, can you talk a little bit about how faith and trust in God plays a part um, in your life, especially in, in the current situation where, where this seems to be uh, your labor of love right now? This is where God has placed you and what he's placed you to do. Um, talk about how faith and, 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 and this, um, this, like, this trust in God kind of carries you through each day. It, it takes faith, Richard. There's, this is where faith faith comes in when you can't see nothing when you can't when when you start feeling that um that what if this what if that you know in in, in our group there's always people that it's going to be coming with those doubts and i know exactly where there comes those doubts so i i right away i rebuke that you know but faith it's something that you can see Faith is something that you know that God is in control completely. It's, it's, we don't know what's going to happen there, but God knows. God knows, and I trust that 100%. When you can see nothing, God can see it. And so because we, we did this with God in the midst of everything, in the middle of it, we pray for those containers before we fill it up, and we pray for those containers when we close those containers. And God will make a way to do that. He goes before us and remember that he prepares the table before your enemy. So I'm not scared of that, um, you know, not being distributed the way it should. I know that God is over that. He already prepared that. So those containers are going to be delivered to the right people and, and distributed the way they should be. Um, that's what it takes. That's where you, that's where faith comes through that you don't know, but God knows. And uh, it's amazing how God makes a way for all these things. The money, we, you know, came from nowhere. Um, right now, I'm just praying that we send the last container and uh, 
and I'm doing yard sales. I'm doing, I'm gathering all these women of God that they just cook and they let's do this and let's do that. And we just, God makes you so creative. We, we got gifts, you know, we just got to explore those gifts. We are very creative. And, and I said, God, just, just give me an idea of what do you want me to do? How am I going to do this, God? But you know that. You already know that. Remember that we, God is not going to place everything easy for us. We as a Christian know that we always, even though that God has everything for us, we, we, God wants us to, to work for it. God wants us to, to really, you know, not, it's like, he doesn't spoil us. He knows that we are going to put everything that he gave us in our brain and everything, and he will make a way. So once everything happened, it's just amazing how, whoa, you know, he's, he got this, this such amazing way to blow your mind. It's just amazing that I see that every day in my life because there's time that I came home so discouraged um, because I didn't have a bed for a whole week and, um, and I had to sleep on the floor. But I said, you know what, God, I'm so thankful. I was so happy just to know that uh, I have a roof over my head and these kids right now in the street. I saw this picture so disturbing. The mom was carrying and covering her kid with the, with the trash bag. And that could have been me with one of my kids, Richard. And when I put myself in their shoes, that's where everything happens. And, um, and let's not forget that God wants us to have the way, you know, his heart. When you have a tender heart like God, God will make you this, you know, he will pour that out in, in you. He will put it out in you because he wants to use us. And, and that's what it is. It's not me. He put it in my heart and he makes a way for everything. You are really inspiring and definitely uh, we can see God working through you to, to, to bring hope to a, uh, an entire people, an entire country. And uh, I just want to, I want to thank you for everything that you're doing. And um, like I said before, um, you're inspiring everybody here, and um, and it is it is um, really beautiful how God works through one person to another, through another. Uh, so our conversation turned into um, this event that we're having at our youth ministry, turning into people bringing in donations to our church, turning into only God knows right now, right? And you, uh, and you saw the response right away, Richard. You were you were so surprised right away. You talked to we talk in the morning. In the afternoon, you already have all this. You just send out an email, and that's how. And that that right there will show you how when you do things with God in the middle, He will take care of the rest. That's how I see it. He will take care of the rest. So uh, again, everybody, take a look at the link in the description. Uh, in this video, uh, we'll give you more and more um, news and updates as far as what we can do and what we're doing in Honduras and what we'll continue to do and how God will continue to, to guide us in this mission. And um, this Friday, um, we are sending, uh, we are making and sending care packages um, for the children in Honduras. Ada will be hand delivering them on the streets, uh, in the villages and in the cities in Honduras. Um, the week following next so that's pretty exciting don't forget to take pictures and video I won't. and and send Everything that to us because my kids here my I, I call them my kids because they're like my kids but my youth ministry kids um they, they're they'd love to see that so i know they can't make it there but i think some of them uh might be very willing and able to go this summer maybe if, 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 if that would be amazing yeah that would be amazing they God would, they would love that experience richard when yeah, so, kids do that, it changed their life. It changed something in, inside of you. So, we so a qu them. one question would be, how much Spanish do they need to know? I mean, I don't. I know um, they don't all speak as well as I do, uh, Espanol. But um, what are you laughing at? Um, <laughs> so this is why this whole thing is in, in English. Um, but uh, yeah, how much Spanish do you need to know if you're in Honduras, walking the streets, well, helping out? You you'll be surprised all the crew that we have in Honduras actually are um, Americans. They're, you won't have no issue with that. Your Spanish, 
Your little Spanish will be good, Richard. No problema. Don't worry about that. No problema. No problema. No problema. Okay, bueno. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Ada, you take care. God bless you. And why don't you close us in a prayer? Yes. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for for this moment, for this space that you make, um, that you make, um, that you just allow it to happen, Lord God. I just thank you for Richard, Father God, and his family. I pray blessings over the family and the Lord, those kids that are going to be making those those gift bags for, for the other kids in Honduras. And I just speak blessings, Father God, over those family that had connected right away and then and then just be part of this, Lord God, because we want you want you to be you you want us to be one body, Lord God. You call us to be that. And I just pray, Father God, that today it's a it's a day that we're gonna rejoice in your name father god all the glory be to you father god and thank you for making this moment happen and i just pray um, that you just that all everything that is gonna be sent out to honduras father god has um has you, your name in it and you be in the midst of everything lord god we thank you lord ahead of time for all the blessings father god in jesus mighty name we pray amen amen Pray like Father uh, Blessed Solanus Casey. He always would say, Lord, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do and what you've done already. So um, <laughs> there is one thing I forgot, which is underway. In, and we are doing a benefit concert for Honduras. I have many musician friends that oh, are yeah. so talented. They, they do different things like country and rock and and Americana, and uh, we're going to be um, putting together a pre-recorded concert that you can buy uh, with any donation to get the to get the link to it, and that should be ready right before Christmas. And uh, my own personal uh, project will be on there. Yoli, I believe your son uh, will be contributing as well, who's a fantastic singer, and yes. um, so it will be um, uh, national international maybe i don't know um but we're working on it we're pre-recording it. it's going to be beautiful it's going to be inspirational um so more details to come on that um i want to thank you i want to thank father bob for allowing us to um use the parish as a as a medium and a source to get the word out so uh blessings upon everybody god bless you god bless you guys bye-bye